Yeah, okay, you've seen the title. I'm making a gun. So yeah, guns. They're really political. You either really love them, or you hate them, or you're somewhere in between. Now, I don't know much, but if there's one thing I am certain I know about, it's the fact that in the rare chance this video somehow gets popular, there will be a war in the comments. So allow me to clear this up. This is not a gun channel in any way. This is likely going to be the first of only two videos that I ever do about guns on this channel. If this channel does actually survive beyond the point of two channels before I give up. So yeah, let me make this clear. I am all for owning guns. I don't think it's a negative thing to own a gun. In fact, I think it's a positive thing. However, I do not agree with those people who say that there should not be regulation to own guns. Instead, I think in certain places, for example, Texas, there should be more regulation. In fact, the lack of regulation in Texas and the lack of you know, proper, reg proper regulations and restrictions in Texas is the reason why I'm able to do this video. And yes, before you guys ask, this is perfectly legal in Texas. In Texas, you are allowed to construct a firearm at home as long as it does not transfer ownership. In fact, you can build a fully automatic firearm at home without proper registration. The only limitations on this are if you act, are if you made a short barrel rifle or actually wait, I think to build a fully automatic firearm you do need registration, but it's not illegal to do so. The only restriction on it is that it cannot transfer ownership, which I don't think for me is going to be a big issue because it's going to be basically useless. But yeah, now with the technicalities out of the way, I can actually start making this video. This has taken me so many takes. Why am I doing this at 6? Well, yeah, now onto the actual purpose of this video. So this is going to probably be a two-part series now that I think about it because I don't want to go through the time and effort of editing a lot of pieces together. I would rather just do two short videos separately instead of one longer video. I don't know how to edit well. But yeah, so uh, this first video is going to be explaining how the gun that I want to make works. And the first part we have to start off with is the trigger, also known as the trigger group or trigger assembly. But yeah, that's essentially what most trigger groups for bolt-action rifles look like, which is what I'm going to be making. Uh, more specifically for this project, I will be making essentially a single shot bolt action rifle because I don't want to go through the time and effort of making a magazine and something that will actually cycle. I would much rather just do something simple because I'm lazy. <laughs> but to be even more specific, what I drew here is very similar to the trigger group inside of the Car 98K. And the reason why I did that is because I feel like it would be more simple for me to design this compared to some of the other uh, trigger groups of m most bolt-action rifles out there. Which, they all work on the same principle, but they're arranged slightly differently. And I don't have a safety mechanism drawn on here because I don't want to go through the effort of drawing it. I will add a safety mechanism into the actual gun, but I won't draw it here. And it's pretty easy to figure out how a trigger mechanism would work. Or the safety mechanism. God damn it! God damn it, man! Why am I doing this? Why am I screwing up now? Why? Why? I need to know this. Alright. Yeah. Okay. That. But yeah, to be even more specific to you people, to you people, what? Alright. But yeah, to be more specific, what I drew here is very similar to the trigger group that you would see on a Car 98K. Now the reason why I did this is because I feel like it would be a lot simpler for me to model this out in, in, in Fusion 360 compared to, god damn it, retake, dip in snap. So yeah, to be even more specific, this is very similar to a Car 98K trigger group. And the reason why I did that is because I feel like it would be a lot simpler for me to make in Fusion 360 than the designs of most trigger groups of other bolt-action rifles. And the reason why I did that isn't because I feel like it would be better for the actual gun, it's because I'm lazy. 
And just like other bolt action rifles, and I think most other guns actually, there's two main parts to this, and, there, and that is the sear and the trigger itself. And the way that guns actually fire is that, you know, whatever, whatever firing mechanism is actually held back by the bolt. For example, on a bolt action rifle, the bolt is actually held back by the sear. Before the trigger is depressed, the, the sear passes down and the bolt flies forward. That is the same for striker fed, that is the same for a striker and hammers. What is my script? I forgot. <laughs> okay. I need water. What time is it? It's 5.35. How long have I been recording? I've been recording for 22 minutes. Holy crap. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let's get this going. But yeah, like most other bolt-action rifles, and I think most guns actually, this trigger group is comprised of two main parts, the sear and the trigger itself. Now, uh, this is actually how similar to how every single gun functions. Whatever firing mechanism is every single time is held back by the sear. And the way that it is released is the sear being pressed down in whatever manner of ways. But it all works because of pressing the trigger. And in bolt action rifles, specifically this specific type, the way that it works is once you press down the trigger, this lifts up. And then that brings it down. To be even more specific about this, you can see that there are two pivot points here. The one in the front locks the sear onto the actual outside of the trigger shell, meaning that it cannot move up and down, it can only swivel in place. And the second uh, pivot is actually only connecting the sear and the trigger itself. This way it is not locked in place to the gun and it can actually freely move around. But this is how it works. If you press down the trigger, the if you, when you press down the trigger, the trigger will go back. But as you can see, there is a section at the back that is slightly raised up. And most of the time, it is in a triangular shape, but it can be different, I think. Um, and once it is raised up, there is, all, there is every single time will be a sort of roof or ceiling to the trigger mechanism. And that way, it forces the sear to actually press down instead of the trigger just moving and swiveling in place. And that's essentially just, and that's essentially how the sear gets pressed down from the up position. Okay, and then cut there. Alright. But yeah, now we understand how the trigger mechanism works, which arguably is probably the most important part of the gun. Because without it, you can't really fire, right? Well, I mean, actually, you could fire just by pulling the bolt back. <laughs> Speaking of the bolt, uh, we have to actually understand how the bolt works. And for this, I'm not going to be making it similar to an actual bolt. And I'll explain the reason why. Okay, editing me speed this up and speed this up like uh, time lapse, unless the battery has already died, in which case that is sad. And the reason why I can't exactly design it like a conventional uh, bolt is because I'm not using conventional cartridges. I am making my own cartridge and the okay. The reason why I cannot design a conventional bolt is because I'm not using a conventional cartridge. I'm not using a 9mm, not using 5.56, not using 30-06, none of that. I am making my own cartridge, which is going to be a very bad cartridge, but I don't care. And actually, this, uh, this actually has a term. It is called wildcatting and the cartridges are called Wildcat cartridges. There's actually quite a few very famous Wildcat cartridges that are now like kind of standard, but uh, I, the one that I am making definitely will not be standard because of how bad it is, and the way that, it, and what it looks like will essentially look like this. Now you might be thinking, Ivan, what the hell is this? I thought you were making a gun, not a missile launcher. And the answer is, this is the bullet. <laughs> to better explain why, part is what on the bullet. Uh, 
Well, you can see that there's a rectangular shape here. This will actually be the shell of the bullet. And secondly, I messed up this drawing here. Let me just hold on, just wait a second. All right, yeah, there. And then this front bit is, will be the actual bullet that fires out. The second part here will be the powder. And the way that I'm going to be making the powder is I will be crushing up some match, head, uh, some match heads into a very fine powder and then scraping off some of the striker paper uh, into it. The King of Random, actually a while back before he unfortunately passed away, uh, actually put up a video explaining how to do this. You have to find it though because I don't think it's on his main channel anymore. Uh, if I can find it, I'll try and link it uh, in the description if uh, I can. And if I don't, and if it doesn't breach copyright or uh, you know what he wanted to do with the video. And then next, uh, this back part, it looks like a fin of some kind, but no, it is literally just a screw or a tapered piece of steel that I might actually just forge out. Uh, I haven't decided yet, but the way that this essentially works is you can is look at the powder here, right? You might be wondering, hey, Ivan, there, hey, man, there's no, uh, there's no primer in the back. How are you going to fire this? Well, the thing is, the primer is inside of the powder here. <laughs> and to better explain how that works is we, is let me just make it look like my hand is having a stroke here. Uh, so imagine these dots are uh, small bits of the match head powder. And then imagine these squares inside of it are pieces of the striker paper. And essentially how it'll work is you can see that there's a bit of space here between the bolt, between the screw, sorry, and the actual powder. Uh, once the bolt is released, it will actually just be, essentially be a hammer and then strike the back of this, uh, strike the back of this screw or whatever I choose it to be and that will push it forward. Now you can see that I drew it, that I drew the powder here, not as a solid box, but rather small bits of powder. And the reason why is because it will not actually be that compressed. If it was that compressed, it will generate so much heat, it will automatically burn. Uh, instead of what it will be, it's essentially just a very fine, but also, it's essentially going to be a hard, but also slightly loose piece of uh, powder disc. And that will be what this is. And how it will work is that once this gets put forward, it will actually force the dots inside here to compress with each other and essentially compress like this. Now the interesting thing is that the way that it fires and the way that most bullets actually work is uh, it isn't that there's an explosion at the back propelling it, but rather it's a buildup of pressure that forces the bullet out the front. It's a very common misconception that bullets are just explosives. No, they are burning, they, no, they're essentially uh, flares. <laughs> but yeah, it will essentially compress it down. And the especially interesting thing about this is because the uh, striker paper um, is mixed inside of it, once you compress it, that will force some of the granules of the uh, matcha powder to rub against the actual striker paper. And that will create a small controlled fire that will eventually spread and burn off the majority of the powder inside. Now, I have not tested these two together, and I have only tested them separately. However, what I have found out with some very small tests of the uh, actual powder itself, by the way, the powder isn't that loud when it's in tiny quantities, and I mean tiny quantities. By tiny quantities, I mean like, I took a syringe, and then I scooped it up with a syringe, and then I dumped it onto a piece of paper and I smacked it with a spoon. It worked, and it went off, uh, and it was pretty loud actually for that small for how small it was, but um, what I noticed is that it's not smokeless. I thought it would be smokeless for whatever reason, but it isn't. And the reason why, I think, is because it's a very incomplete burn. It doesn't burn fast enough to uh, actually burn off every single bit of the powder inside. And although, and I feel like it's going to be relatively the same, even if it's inside of the cartridge, uh, because it just doesn't burn fast enough for that to happen. And the reason why modern cartridges don't produce that much smoke uh, black, uh, compared to black powder guns uh, and other stuff is because of how fast it burns and because of how efficiently it burns. And so yeah, that's essentially the basis of how this gun works. Uh, I probably made it way too simple for me to actually get anything out of this experience. But whatever, this is just an excuse for me to make a gun. <laughs> but yeah, there's not really much else for me to explain. This gun is extremely simple. And again, it's probably way too simple. Uh, I probably made this way too simple for me to get anything out of it. 
But yeah, whatever. This is basically just an excuse for me to get a gun. And, uh, or rather make a gun. And, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say, so let's just cut to the end card.